Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. February has been an exceptionally mild month so far, but there are signs of a change. So, as usual, let me start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 20th. And at the outset, as I say, it is a mild picture. Winds coming from the southwest, so it's also quite an unsettled one. And as I run this sequence, we see heavy outbreaks of rain, strong winds clearing eastwards, but then there's more of a west or northwesterly tilt to things, so temperatures are dipping. You may have seen a little bit of white shading there over the northern half of Britain and maybe the Welsh mountains too, indicating sleet or snow showers. Into the weekend, and this particular computer model run has an area of low pressure running across southern Britain. That is something to keep an eye on because it brings a potential for longer outbreaks of rain, maybe a little bit more sleet or snow over the Welsh mountains. Also a chance of strong winds. Rather chilly at this point compared to how it has been for much of a month, and that continues to be the case through the rest of the weekend and the first half of next week. With low pressure staying close by, there is an ongoing risk of showers or longer spells of rain. Now, I've mentioned the transition to cooler conditions. I think it shows up well on this sequence, which is um, showing air temperatures at about 1500 meters above sea level. So the orange is there to the south, indicating a very warm air mass. The deep purples and blues way to the north, a very cold one. And the UK at the outset is under the green shading veil, which is rather mild at this level. But what we see as I run this is increasingly the light blues take up residence over the UK. So a much cooler picture at this level at least than has been the case for a good deal of the month. How does that transpose to temperatures down at the ground level? Here are some samples. They are just being used as indicative forecast charts. Remember, there will be day-to-day -day variations as we head through the week. So Wednesday, the 21st of February, it's still mild or very mild, really double figures there, even in Scotland and Northern Ireland, 12s, 13s, 14s, quite possible in the south. Forwards though to Friday, and it has now turned quite a good deal cooler or even colder. Sevens, eights, maybe nines in southern and central regions, which is more or less where they should be in late February. Several degrees lower there in Northern Ireland and Scotland, Northern England too. Also, nighttime temperatures taken a tumble, at least on some nights. Forecast minimums here on Saturday morning, close to or a little bit below freezing in much of the UK. Therefore, the risk of frost returns and indeed becomes quite a lot more widespread than it has been for much of February. Maximums into the early part of next week, it's staying average or a little bit below. So as I, the, the point to emphasize is relative to how it has been for much of February, quite a chilly picture here developing, but it's not desperately cold by any means. It's just close to or a little bit below the average. That's emphasized by the Morgreps G ensemble plot for London on this, each of these individual lines is showing forecast temperatures down at the ground level. They're all closely packed together for much of the first week, so indicating a good deal of agreement. If the runs start to diverge, it suggests lower forecast confidence. So the takeout here is through the first few days, double figures, but then here's that dip, maximums becoming close to six, seven or eight Celsius through the second half of the first week. Rainfall. I've been saying it's quite an unsettled pattern, so rain in all parts of the UK. The aggregates here are for days not to five from the ECM and GFS models. Wettest generally in the west, the northwest, maybe close to the south coast too. The rainfall distribution pattern here is what you would expect with the weather still coming in from the Atlantic, even though there is going to be more of a west or a northwesterly tilt to the flow. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, the same general patterns are being shown. 
values have increased in all areas. So probably driest in the east and the maybe even northeast, eastern Scotland, for example. But there are some differences there between the ECM and GFS models, but the general distribution is quite similar. So how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here's the GFS on Tuesday the 27th of February. High pressure building up from the southwest there. The blue shading over the UK indicates quite a cold air mass, a chilly one anyway. The Canadian model has a similar pattern, although upper air temperatures are a bit higher. We've got the high pressure air building up from the southwest. The German icon, similar once more. The European ECM. And finally, the UK Met Office Global. Broadly speaking, they are similar in terms of the, pro the pattern, the big picture which they're showing, but there are some differences in terms of air temperatures over the UK. For example, the UK Met Office there seems to be a little bit close to the GFS in having some lower values than the, uh, than the Canadian model did. But all in all, I think the picture for the end of the first week is quite a mixed one. High pressure may be having a little bit more influence for a time. Temperatures close to or just perhaps a little bit below the norm. So does that continue to be the case as we head through the second week? Well, of course, at this range, it's just about the trends and the probabilities. Here is the 16-day GEFS ensemble plot for London. Air temperatures across the top and the thick purple line, the ensemble mean, it's hardly visible because it's hogging the thick black line. They don't, the, the distinction between the two is not at all clear. So what that means is that the, the ensemble mean is really staying very close to that 30 year average, more or less throughout the second week. But with that said, it is generated by average and out the individual runs and they show something a little bit more uncertain because there are a number which are bringing in notably milder air and a few which are keeping things a good deal colder. But I, I think on this occasion, the ensemble mean isn't too far off being representative. It does look like quite an average picture as we head through this period. Rain risk, spikes continue to show up across the bottom there, so it's ongoing. And if you're interested in the risk of snow, at least in the south, it's low according to this. The snow row values never climbing above three. They can go up to 33. The two meter temperature data tables, quite close to the average, perhaps a little bit below through the first few days, as I've been saying. These are maximums across the top. We are now reaching part of the year where temperatures are beginning to climb. The averages are beginning to rise. Later on, more yellow starts to show up for a while at least. Those are maximums of between 11 to 15 Celsius. There's even a little bit of dark orange. I'm not entirely sure I need to take a look at that run to see what it's going for because it's indicating maximums of between 21 and 25 Celsius. That really would be something of note, but as I say, I've not had a look at the individual run to see the pattern which it is developing, but it's a very low chance, just one run 3% is what that indicates. Overnight lows. Lots of dark green, so ground frost is distinctly possible for the first half there at least of the second week. The amount of dark green starts to reduce later on. Um, there's only a little bit of blue which is showing up at the very end. So most of the individual runs are keeping temperatures above freezing point. So it looks like ground frost in the south rather than air frost being the thing to look out for. Up to Manchester, the profile here is very similar. The rain spikes across the bottom, perhaps more numerous and a little bit bigger, indicating wetter conditions overall. Also, the snow row values are somewhat higher, going up to seven. So a low risk of snow, but not totally out of the question. The two meter temperature data tables from Manchester, similar profile to London, albeit at a lower level, as is usually the case and really has been consistently throughout this winter, so-called winter, I think. Although there you can see there is more blue on the minimum, so a greater chance of air frosts developing, but still quite low, but certainly ground frost here. Up to Glasgow, it's once more similar. 
So I won't talk too much about the air temperatures, but the rainfall risk there is quite significant through the second week, quite a lot of spikes, and the snow row values, similar really to Manchester ones, maybe a little bit higher. So a low possibility, but certainly not out of the question. And the two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow, broadly speaking, trending downwards from Manchester, which were trending down from London. By this point, there is a good chance of air frosts developing through much of the second week, at least in Scotland. So lots of blue showing up there still. The days, dark green, light green. So the dark greens between one and uh, five Celsius maximum. The light greens between six and 10. So close to, or perhaps a little bit below the average for the time of the year. Rainfall through week two. These are the ECM probability charts showing the chance of five millimetres or more of rainfall on the first three days. Wettest in the west, northwest there, drier in the east, the southeast. So once more, just supporting the idea that the weather is going to be coming in from the Atlantic. Moving forwards to the following three days, broadly speaking, the patterns are similar, but perhaps the chance of significant amounts of rain does begin to reduce at this range. Here's the 10-day GEFS Ensemble Mean Surface Level Pressure Plot. So for Friday the 1st of March, the first day of the meteorological spring, low pressure centered to the west, to the northwest of the UK. Quite a changeable pattern being forecast if this is correct. The ECM ensemble plot at the same point, a little bit different. It looks like there is more of a northwesterly tilt to proceeding, so a greater chance of somewhat colder conditions, therefore an elevated risk of snow in the northern half of the UK over high ground. But all in all, it's, it's quite a similar theme which is being illustrated here. Finally, the mean surface level pressure data table for York. So this is going through the second week. Changeable would probably summarize things because lots of green in the columns. Those runs going for uh, between 996 to 1010 millibars, low pressure dominated ones. The yellows and oranges, which are more uh, been indicating higher pressure, are in a minority. Although later on, the amount of yellow starts to increase notably. So it could just be a signal there for somewhat more settled conditions, or at least drier periods to become more frequent towards and beyond the end of the second week. So to summarize, week one, unsettled with showers or long spells of rain, also the chance of windy periods. It starts off mild, but temperatures trend downwards and it becomes a little bit colder than the average possibly for the time of the year. There is a risk of snow, mostly over northern hills, but perhaps briefly to low levels there, and a chance of it falling over high ground in southern Britain, for example, the Welsh Mountains and the Peak District. Week two, showers or long spells of rain, especially in the west and the north. The chance of further snow over high ground in the northern half of the UK. Temperatures fluctuate around the average, so it could be quite chilly at times, and there is that chance of a frost at night, especially in the northern half of the United Kingdom. So, uh, there we have it. A mixed bag of weather through the next two weeks. A good deal more typical for the time of year than has been the case for much of February with the exceptional mildness being banished away at least for a time. It does look as though things will have a more seasonal feel to them in the coming days. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Remember too to keep up to date with the day-to-day -day forecast developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.